Hi everybody. I'm going to show you what I've been up to today. Yesterday, a big dump truck showed up to my house and dumped all of this mulch, but there was so much more. So Chris and Jackson and I have been working hard to put the mulch into wheelbarrows with shovels and put it all over the flower beds. The mulch is helpful for the plants because it helps to keep moisture and wetness in the ground by the roots. We know that plants need water and sunshine to grow healthy and strong. And then also in the winter, because it gets very cold where we live, having mulch over top of the plants after they've gone to sleep for the winter can be very helpful to protect them. It's been a busy day with lots going on and I'm very dirty as you can see, but I wanted to quick take a break and read a story for you today. You know, while I was moving the mulch today, I was thinking about the last time that we were together. It was still like winter. Spring hadn't even started yet. It was very cold outside still when we saw each other. We were wearing our snow suits. There was snow still in some spots. And then spring happened since we've been home. The time when the snow melts and it gets warmer and the plants start to wake up and grow. And in just a couple weeks, summer will start. We've certainly had days already this year that it feels like summer, right? That it's very hot and we got to wear shorts and t-shirts, maybe some sandals or bare feet out on the lawn. So as I sit here underneath my lilac tree, do you remember I showed you my lilac tree? The blooms on the lilac tree don't last very long. It's just a beautiful week or so. And now look, if we look closely at the blooms, we can see that all the little flower bits are starting to turn crumbly and brown. And they'll come back again next year. That's the lilac tree. Hey Paisley, are you checking out all the new mulch there? So, let's get ready to shake before we read a book about seasons and trees. A Tree for All Seasons by Robin Bernard Year after year, a maple tree changes from season to season. Check it out. Right across from where I'm sitting, there is a very large maple tree in my backyard. There are different kinds of maple trees that have different shades of greens for their color. But I'll show you the one that I'm looking at. There it is. The great big maple tree right there. It's so tall. And right underneath, right here, that's the little rhubarb plant I showed you at the beginning of spring. It's getting so big now. In winter, the tree is bare. It looks dead, but it is alive and well. Many things are happening. Squirrels nap in a cozy tree hole. Do you see right here the sleeping squirrels in the tree? A little bird sits on a branch and calls its name. Chickadee dee 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 dee. Chickadee dee 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 dee. Look closely at this tree branch. The bumps at the tips are buds. They will open into leaves when the weather gets warmer. This is when the tree is sleeping. We often talk about that in our classroom, right? When the plants go to sleep over the winter. As winter ends, nights are still cold, but days are getting warmer. It is perfect weather for farmers to collect sugar maple sap. The sap flows out of taps that are in the trees and into buckets. 
Can you see that tap there that's been put into the tree? The sap has no color until it is boiled. Then it becomes dark, sweet maple syrup. What a treat for pancakes and waffles. Spring brings warmer weather. Leaf buds open. Soon the maple tree grows floppy green flower tassels. My maple trees certainly did that in the spring. Birds build nests on the branches. Hey, look who it is. Robin in the rain. Spring also brings rain showers. The tree's roots soak up water and carry it to all parts of the tree. <laughs> look at the veins in this leaf. That's all the lines. Air, water, and sap all flow through them. In summer, the maple tree is covered with dark green leaves. Fruit called Samaras is growing on the tree. It makes a good meal for chipmunks. Hey, Samaras, do you remember? We also call them maple keys. My maple trees are letting down Samaras right now. Check out this handful of Samaras I found while I was putting out mulch. Do you remember what we did with these? There are lots of fun things you can do with Samaras. Inside the Samara, that is where the seed is to grow a new tree. And indeed, we did germinate some Samaras after they dried out. Now I'm not sure because these aren't dried ones if I'm able to do the fun thing we like to do with Samaras. Let me see, my darlings. We peel them apart and stick them to our noses. Look, I'm a rhinoceros. That's silly, right? They also are pretty fun because they're kind of like helicopters when you throw these Samaras into the air. Let me give it a try. Oh, lost my rhinoceros horn. Let's throw them up. Well, maybe it works better when they're a little bit dry. These ones just dropped from the tree in the last few days, so they're still green and quite wet inside. When we find them in the fall, they are all dried out and they float down much more like helicopters than they do when they're wet. Samaras. Even on a hot summer day, you can find a cool place to play under a maple tree. In the fall, the tree's leaves turn bright colors. Do you remember what another word for fall is? Autumn. As the leaves dry up, they change from green to yellow, red and orange. Each day, more and more leaves fall. Autumn brings chilly days and nights. Bugs crawl under the tree's bark while they will sleep for the cold winter. Animals get ready for winter when food will be hard to find. Squirrels hide lots of nuts and seeds. If you play in the leaves, you'll hear crunch, scrunch, crunch. But don't worry about making noise. The maple tree won't wake up again until next spring. So much fun we had in the fall in the playground, right? Playing in the leaves. This was a non-fiction story, right? Not pretend, which means real. This is a real non-fictional story. Next up, I have a fictional story for you. It is a favorite story from mine from when I was a little girl. It is called In the Forest. And there are a lot of trees in the forest. Let's read. This book is so old that the pictures are in black and white. There's not even any color. But they're great pictures and I think you'll enjoy it. This story is by Marie Hall Etz.
I had a new horn and a paper hat. Hey, that looks like a trumpet. We've talked about trumpets before, right? Louis Armstrong plays the trumpet so well. Let's make a trumpet. And I went for a walk in the forest. A big wild lion was taking a nap, but he woke up when he heard my horn. Where are you going? He said to me. May I go too if I comb my hair? So he combed his hair and he came too. When I went for a walk in the forest. Two elephant babies were taking a bath, but they stopped their splashing when they saw me. Wait for us, they said, as they dried their ears. One put on his sweater, one put on some shoes, and the elephant babies came too. When I went for a walk in the forest, two big brown bears sat under a tree. They were counting their peanuts and eating jam. Wait a minute, they called. We want to go too. So they picked up their peanuts and a spoon for the jam and the big brown bears came too. When I went for a walk, in the forest. A mother and father kangaroo were teaching their baby how to hop. We'll bring our drums, the mother said, and our baby is no bother at all. I carry him in my pocket. So the baby climbed into his mother's pouch and the kangaroos came too. When I went for a walk in the forest, an old gray stork was sitting down beside a pool of water. He sat so still that I had to go near to see if he was real. The stork stood up and looked at me. He did not say one word, but when I went back to my animals, that funny bird came too. Two little monkeys high up in the trees. Stopped playing and shouted when they saw me. A parade, a parade, we like a parade. So they got their best suits from a hole in the tree. And the two little monkeys came too. When I went for a walk in the forest. I spied a rabbit behind a tall weed. Don't be afraid, I called to him. If you want to go too, you can walk with me. So the rabbit came too. I blew my horn, the lion roared, the elephants trumpeted through their trunks, the big bears growled, the kangaroos drummed, the stork clapped his bill. The monkeys shouted and clapped their hands, but the rabbit made no noise at all when I went for a walk in the forest. We came to a place made for picnics and games, so we stopped and ate peanuts and jam and some ice cream and cake that were there. We played drop the handkerchief once all around. And London Bridge is falling down Then I was it for hide and seek and everyone hid, except the rabbit. He just stood still. That's okay, right? It's okay to be different. 
coming, I called. Then I opened my eyes. There wasn't an animal there at all, but there was dad. He was hunting for me. Whom were you talking to, he said. To my animals, they are hiding, you see. But it's late, dad said, and we must go home. Perhaps they will wait till another day. So I called to them as I rode away. Goodbye, I said, don't go away. I'll hunt for you another day. When I come for a walk in the forest. I wonder if that boy was playing pretend. Perhaps, right? That's a fun thing to play. All right, I better go get back to work so I can wash up my hands before dinner. I wonder what Chris will make tonight. See you next time. Bye-bye.